Okay, my name is Penny Malebe. I am from South Africa. I am currently a PhD candidate at the University of Victoria in the field of biotechnology. I'm also working as a molecular product manager at a lab consumables distribution company. is on plant biotechnology. I work with the tea plant. So I look at areas within the DNA that are responsible for traits of interest. For example, drought tolerance, yield, and uh, polyphenol in the tea plant. So the reason why this research question came up is because in cases of drought, some plants will survive it while others die out. And the tea plant is an example of that. Some cultivars will continue to thrive in drought conditions while others die out. We want to know why is that if the environment is the same, then the answer to that must lie on a DNA level. This will then be helpful to us because we are undergoing climate change and it will help us or find ways for food security. In understanding regions within the DNA that allow plants to be drought tolerant, we're able to select for cultivars within different crops that will survive such conditions and in that we will have food security. The research that we do at the University of Pretoria is hand in hand with what Africa is ready for, with what Africa is undergoing. So currently, the leaders of tea, it's China, India, and the third world leader of tea is Kenya. And that makes it very relevant because that is a great commodity for Kenya. The gaps that I faced in my area of research is technology. The plants were identified in Kenya. I went there to get the plants and then extract the DNA, take out the DNA in a laboratory within South Africa. And at the moment, at that time, the technology that I wanted to use was not available in Africa. I had to go out to Australia. Um, it would have been great if this technology was available within Kenya or even within South Africa. And the options that I was given at the time was sent through the DNA or sent through the plant itself and they will carry out the research and send me the data to analyze back home in Africa. I then said that this wasn't helpful to what I'm doing because there's no skills transfer if you just send out the work and you just receive data analysis. In growing technology base within Africa, it allows for skills transfer within our continent. And support with funding because these technologies do not come cheap and that's why they do not they were they are not available in some regions within our continent there's a lack of funding that's where industry can come in and with government it can come in by facilitating for us to have these institutions in place or laboratories in place and even having interchangeable labs where you can go from one lab within the continent to another and we just do skills based transfer In the next five to ten years, I see myself in the skills transfer arena. Currently, as a product manager, I continue to go to different laboratories within my country. In that field, I'm continuously acquiring knowledge, but also transferring it to other laboratories. And as I feel that as long as I'm in an environment where I'm constantly learning and constantly growing and enabling others to constantly learn and constantly grow, then the next five, ten years, that's where I will be. For me, the next Einstein Forum has been a wonderful platform to connect with different people from different regions of my continent. I can actually say I know 54 people from 54 different countries, and not just in a scientific space, but in a personal space. If I need to get in touch with somebody from Ghana for personal reasons or for just networking for visits it's been a great platform for that for developing friendships but also for collaborations 
a way to um, grow yourself and grow other ambassadors. Africa Science Week was a wonderful platform for us to connect with our country and to showcase science on different levels. For me, the highlight was going back to my village and sharing what it is I actually do. I don't think I would have had that platform if it wasn't for Africa Science Week because we always find ourselves being so busy. But this time we dedicated that time.